So it bothered me that I disagreed with Bruce in terms of that bond angle for dimethyl ether. And so I thought what I would do as a computational chemist is I would go to some, some software, which I have, Avogadro, which does molecular mechanics. Avogadro is some software that we're going to be using for Lab D. It's something you may want to go ahead and download onto your own computer, practice with a little bit. It's pretty user friendly. It's cross platform. In other words, it uh, it's it's Java, so it, it it can run on Windows or Mac or Linux boxes equally good. And it's a pretty small footprint, so I think there's there's not a, there's a, there's a lot of reasons why you may want it on your machine. Anyway, this stuff does lots of things, and it's pretty user friendly, as I said. So what I want to do is start out with something like say water. And we'll check the molecular structure of water uh, with different force fields, which we'll explain later. Uh, set up the force field. This is, you know, software that you're going to want to play with a little bit when you do Lab D, just to get yourself comfortable with it. But what I'm going to do is, is go here to an energy function, and I'm going to start with the first force field, and I'm going to start here. What this is going to do is going to optimize the geometry of this thing. And you'll see up here you've got the overall potential energy of the system that's slowly decreasing. It's getting more and more stable. Can you see that? 56, 54, 53, 52. And this is the change in energy uh, per time step. It's sort of optimizing right now. While that's working, let me come over here and sort of show you what's going on. Actually, I think I can just do it like that. No, I still get these mixed up. I have to do them. All right, I can rotate this thing around. You can see that the bond angle isn't changing a whole lot. In this representation, this is an oxygen, and these two are hydrogens here. So let's stop this. Let's go back to the energy setting. Let's stop this, and suppose it's reached pretty much an, optimi an optimized geometry. We'll go to View, Properties, Angle Properties, and we're looking for, as you know, we're looking for a hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen bond angle. And it says it's 110. So we were expecting it to be 105, right? 104.5. Um, just So let's make a point of this. It's 110. I'm not going to write that down. But let's go to a different force field. And these are all different models that are computational models. Uh, so it may be that GAF is not optimized for water. But what about chemical? Let's try that. You can see we immediately we got some changes both in bond angle I and mean, bond lengths. This has already reached. See how the, the change in energy is down to zero. It's already reached some kind of a minimum. So let's go to let's go ahead and stop that. View properties angles. This is 109.5. Look at that, perfect. Okay, so probably chemical is written with a, an actual minimum sort of hardwired into it of 109.5 for tetrahedra. Let's go to MMFF94. That's Merck Molecular Force Field. Let's see what that does. You, did you see a change in that when I did that? Okay, it's already reached a minimum. Okay, let's stop that. Let's go to View, Properties, Angle Properties, 103.9780, right? 104, basically. That's what MMFF94 gives a bond angle for water of 104, 103.97. Um, let's perturb this a little bit. Let's go, say, here. And let's grab this and let's make it linear or close to linear. I'm perturbing it, right? It doesn't want to be linear. But we're making, we're sort of forcing it into a minimum, into a, into, a, into a linear. And then we're going to minimize it again, watch. And let's see if it goes to the same number. Okay. Did you see it? Uh, where, what was that? What was this one here? I guess. Okay. Did you see it change? Sort of. It went back, right? Oh, wait. It went back to where it was. Okay. Let's go back to energies. We'll stop that. View properties on angles. All right. 103.978. Same as it was. Let's make this. Let's do it again. Except this time, let's make this bond angle really extreme. Okay. And if we go to the energies to minimize this thing again, start. It'll go back to about the same thing. When this number gets down to zero, all right, we'll stop it. And we'll go look at the properties bond angle again. 
103. Okay, so it's constant. So for MMFF94, it goes to 104. For chemical, it went to 109.5. And for GAF, it went to, I don't remember, 110, maybe. I think 94S is the same. It's a slightly different force field. Let's go to UFF. Let's start it with that. Stop. Let's go to energies. It's already it's already down to zero, so let's stop that. View properties, angle properties, 104.5. Alright, now that's the textbook definition for it. So it could be that UFF is, is optimized for water. In other words, this whole this whole force field is 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 built for things that are you know aqueous. Alright, so let's go with this one since that's the, what our textbook says. Let's go with this one and let's tr let's change this into dimethyl ether. In order to do that, we have to go to a function that's build carbon. Make that sort of linear. Oh, I mean, you know that's not the that's not the uh, view center. Right, you know that that's not the. Still rotating. I'm not sure why it's rotating. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. All right, so let's go now to energy, and this is UFF. You can see this thing is rotating now. It sort of took on a bent shape. This number's getting lower up here. I don't know if it's going to go all the way to zero. I think it will. Can we wait a minute? It's getting pretty low. Can you see this number is getting smaller and smaller? That's the change. DE is the change in energy. Thank you. Change in energy per time step. Getting pretty low. All right, done. Let's stop that. Let's look at the properties. Angle properties, and it goes to 109. Okay, let's do this one more time with MMFF94, which was also low. Okay, changing a little bit. It's close to zero. This is a really small number, right? Once it gets down to a certain threshold, it just stops. It just calls that number so small, it's zero, okay? So I'll stop that. View, properties, angle properties, 111.5. All right. So this with this force field, it was 111.5, 112. With the, with the UFF force field, it was 109. Uh, you know what? Let's do it with one more, chemical. I think with chemical, the um, the bond angle for water was set to 109.5, so I'm guessing that this is not optimized for water. Maybe for not maybe for not systems like this. Let's do it anyway. Okay, done. View properties 111. All right, so let's. I guess this is the carbon oxygen carbon bond right that we're looking at. It's carbon oxygen carbon and diethyl ether. Uh, just let me uh, finish up this video by emphasizing that we don't that that these are calculations and all calculations are estimates um, and they have their strengths and weaknesses. This, this is a whole discipline in chemistry called computational chemistry. It's a just a sub discipline of theoretical chemistry or physical chemistry, and we get a lot of important things out of it. But you can't take any of these things as gospel. They're estimations. The best way to measure the bond angle in uh, in di dimethyl ether, which is what we're dealing with here, dimethyl ether is to do it with some some kind of spectro spectroscopic technique. 
which is outside the scope of our class. So we sort of take the scientist's word for it when they say what the bond angles are. And, you know, computational chemistry is one tool that's valuable and interesting, but it's, it's only one tool. So hopefully that's um, interesting to anybody who was uh, sort of bothered by the discrepancy between me and Bruce last night when I said that it was 110, as most textbooks do.